Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your Norwegian-American YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back. And this is part two of a two-part video. Make sure you have watched part one. And it's all about installing limit switches for the power feed here on the Bridgeport Mill. Now, I did an awful lot in part one. Hope you watched that again. And let's continue from where I left off and uh, finish off this project, okay? Okay, let's real quickly summarize what I did in part one. I made the one inch square tube into a rail that will attach to the back side of the table with the stops that can be slid into different positions. And then I also made the bracket for the limit switch itself and the spacer block. And that's all in part one if you want to see that in detail. Now let's get these fastened onto the back of the table and this will not be easy to do and I'm going to show you some very unusual setups here for drilling that I guarantee you have never seen on any other video so this is indeed a YouTube first. Okay this is what the final aluminum spacing block looks like very loosely copied from this piece of beech wood so this will space out the uh, limit switch very nicely to marry itself with the rail. Okay, here's a temporary mock-up of the whole thing. The rail is clamped to the bed right now and it's resting on two pieces of wood so that I can get it level. So that's what it looks like. Now what I have to do is to uh, drill and tap a couple holes into the table here, one on each end. That won't be easy, but it'll be easy compared to drilling the two holes for the limit switch. And the limit switch itself requires a spacing block. Now the final one will be made of aluminum, but this is a wood mock-up just to check the dimensions, so that will be screwed right into the saddle and you can see that the limit switch lines up or maybe you can't with the plungers here, the spring-loaded plungers. Alright, that's the game plan. Let's drill some holes. Okay, here's the final position of the rail. I'm all ready to drill some holes so I will take this quarter-inch transfer punch and punch on both ends then I'm ready to drill and here is the final block, spacer block for the switch itself so it's going to set just like that so we've got some holes to drill in the aluminum probably did not need slots here but that will allow a little final adjustment I'm ready to drill some holes take a look at this crazy setup I broke out the mag drill. Now there won't be any room in here to do the final two for the switch, but I think this is going to work out just great. I know, I know I don't have the sky hook on, nor do I intend to, at least not for now. So I hope we don't have a power interruption or this thing's going to end up on my feet. But you can see these the hole here, or the center punch mark, and I'm using a center drill, then I'll switch drills to 1364 and tap it. The trouble is that the dashboard is on the bottom side here. <laughs> I can't see what I'm doing. I hope I don't turn the magnet off. There we go. And by the way, I did check to see that I'm not going to drill into anything or damage anything if I go too deep. And I'd like to drill the 1364 hole about 5 eighths deep.
There we go. Make sure you wear your safety glasses. Look at the magnetism here. I hope I didn't magnetize the entire table. This is a 1 20 taper. And a 1 20 plug, or it's almost a bottoming tap. I don't want to break this off, but the cast iron does tap very nicely, and I want to make sure that I have a straight thread. All right, I'm remounting the rail and I'll tighten this end. And remember, I haven't drilled and tapped the other end yet. I like to do one at a time, then I'm absolutely sure that the holes will line up. I wasn't going to show this side, but it sure is nice having the dashboard up here where I can see it. When I was doing the other side, I had a reach under there, and I didn't know what I was pushing, and I certainly didn't want to turn the magnet off. I know that people are going to criticize me for not restraining this, but that's the way it is. But make sure you have your glasses on. Well, the rail is securely fastened with two cap screws. I'd like to uh, exchange these for button head cap screws. They would look better and less chance of hitting your knuckles on them. But now comes the hard part. How in the heck am I going to drill and tap holes into here for the actual switch and spacer? You know, I've been thinking it sure would be nice if I could use some magnets and these magnets hold, well, a 3 inch diameter and they're 95 pounds. The only thing is I don't have enough space right here. I got about two and a half inches and these are 3 inch magnets. I also thought about this or could I go someplace and find some strong magnets that would do the job. Wow, this is tight quarters both for photography and for working. But I've got everything lined up, and the switch itself is on a temporary block to raise it up to the right height. There are marks here on the saddle that you cannot see. And here, this is my transfer punch, and the other hole is held in alignment with a cap screw. So, let's see if I can mark it. So I've got my right angle stubby drill here, and that's just an eighth inch pilot in there. And I've already marked it so the, the drill bit will go in the hole like that. I suppose my hands are in the way. And I'll easily be able to turn it on. But you see this piece of beech wood back here? I'm going to, since I can't fit the orange drill press in there, the magnetic drill press, I'm turning the entire machine into a drill press. So, watch the wooden block back here. So now, when I turn the drill on, I will be feeding with the, <laughs> the cross feed, and I'll go in a half inch or so, and then I'll switch bits to the uh, 1364 and then tap one hole. And hopefully, this hole doesn't drift on me. I had to remove the rail because it was in my way, in my sight line here. So let's see if this will work. Now I'm going to drill 13 64ths. Okay, that worked quite well, so now I have positioned it, and I've snug down one screw, and I have put a little level on there, and now I will transfer the other one.
final assembly. Okay, here's the final insulation and the stops can be moved easily in any position. Lines up real well with the switch itself. And then locked as needed. I'll probably, as I said before, keep them in this position for normal use so there can be no runaway accident. But if I'm doing something special, I would set them up for the length of the work. Astute observers will note that I installed a cable clamp right here. It should be a little tighter, I think. Maybe I need to buy a new one. One of my initial concerns was the DRO scale right here is, well, whatever that is. But it ends up that I'm about the same right here within an eighth of an inch. So I didn't really gain anything. Although... I really wanted this out of the way because, let's face it, I will not use it very often. Let's check to see how much clearance we got here. I know that may be a problem. So if you'll watch in here, I have lost about two and a half inches of space. And I suppose at some place, <laughs> at some time, I will forget about it and ram it in there and destroy the whole thing. You know what, during testing I discovered something, and I never would have thought of this ahead of time, but this switch is made to be mounted on the front of the machine, so when I have put it on the rear machine, it works backwards. That is, it does not turn off in the direction that you expect. It's just the opposite. So I'm going to see if I can switch the switch from one side of this to the other. I think that'll do it if it'll mount up. Well, my carefully calculated and machined little Philister head screws that I painted red did not work. Luckily, I had in stock a box of three quarter inch long 540s. They're scarce as hen's teeth. And I have reversed the switch and we'll tighten these down. And the, the screws go a little bit all the way through, but there's no interference. so. No problem. I'll get this mounted back on the machine. Okay, I never could have foreseen that I would have to reverse the switch. I guess I'm not smart enough to see that far in the future, but I'm not going to put the cover on here. Let's have a test run here. See if it works. Oh no, it's going to crash! It's going to crash! Oh! Gonna crash on the other end. Ah, the safety switch works. Well, I went to put on the cover, and believe it or not, the little screws interfere, so I have to take this back off. I won't bore you with that. And grind off the screws. Okay, let's have a test drive from this view. Not that it'll be any different. It's going to crash. I'm in the bathroom. Oh, sure glad I put that on. Well, that was a long, long two-part video, wasn't it? But it sure was enjoyable. There were a lot of little problems to solve and little techniques that I used there that I really have never used before. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you did like it and leave a comment. And be sure to continue to watch my thousands of shop videos. This is Mr. Pete, your Norwegian YouTube shop teacher, saying so long for now. You know what? As a bonus feature, I decided to give you a little walk around the shop to see what it looks like and what a mess it is while I'm actually making a video.
Clean up! I said clean up! Put your tools away!